Hi, I'm Richard Rindak, and this is The Great Game. Today, Ken and I share our thoughts about the Battle of Utah Springs by GMT Games. So, Ken, uh, it it turns out that the Americans decided to uh, concede the game at the end of turn seven. Any thoughts as to um, why that was so? What do you think? I don't. Yeah, I don't see them uh, penetrating that line and getting to those camps anytime too soon. So, uh, the way I would see games is uh, I don't have too much time to play too many games. So. You know, I want to. Uh, I would concede and go to the next one. I don't think the Americans have a chance of take getting to the to that blue star or anything like that. The Wanty Plantation, or no? Yeah. So on uh, your strongest unit is Green and his stack, but um, yeah. you're going to have to go around. Uh, I've got Sheridan's rifle and the Charleston Hussars. Not yeah, that they're, guys... they're that strong, but Stewart's waiting uh, a little bit further back. But uh, one I... thing, one thing I notice is that uh, it's possible for either side actually to get a little bit over their skis, and uh, by which I mean uh, end up without a retreat path. So if you look at Pickens uh, Sumter, um, where their their retreat ha- should be has to be uh, towards the west towards the left side of the map. Right, right. And you've got a sizable stack there. So if uh, he, if he gets picked off, if, for example, the British get the initiative next turn, um, he could get picked off. And even with a, just a retreat results, uh, he could be wiped out because of no no avenue of retreat. So that's I think that puts the Americans, they're, they're a little fragmented, at the, it seems, at this point, with the British a little bit more concentrated. Yeah, I mean, the same thing, I suppose, could theoretically happen to the 63rd. They got nowhere to, to go themselves. Do, do artillery uh, leave its zone of control? Like Gaines? Yeah, or? well, so here's the other tricky thing about zone of control. A unit does not exert zone of control into the woods, right? Into the woods, but the light woods, I think they do. Oh, they do in the light woods. Yeah, in the light woods. So I think you don't have, you know, you may have the same issue, the problem yeah. being, I'd yeah. have to get you. And I don't think I can get you, and you would get me before I get you. Yeah. Well, uh, so a lot of it would depend on uh, the Americans having the initiative, I suppose. Yes. So, I mean, the thing here's the way I see it, is the British are working on interior lines. It seems as though the uh, you, you bopped from one end of the line to the next. True. Whereas you have to go uh, uh, around the outside of the arc, so to speak. Yeah, right on. I was stuck on one end with the blackjack, stuck on one end with the marsh. So I was going back to thinking about momentum and the use of momentum in this game and why they give you one to begin with. And I think that if I was to try it again, I would absolutely take that potato farmer out, even if I had to use my momentum. Because I do think that the Americans have to grab that open space with the stars before the British do and push the line over to the fence around where Stuart himself is right now and start the game right there. Right. Well, speaking, speaking of that, when we calculated the, uh, the odds for the forging party, uh, you should have gotten one more dice roll modifier, and that would have eliminated the forging party and kept the momentum yeah. Uh, kept the sorry kept the initiative with the Americans, which would have allowed them to maybe capture the you know the forward most uh, point on the perimeter. Right, right. Could have been. Uh, yeah, I suppose. So it would have point, been a totally different game, really, if we had do done think, it correctly yeah. in the beginning. Well, even if they would have rolled a zero, even if, I think they should. If that would have happened, then they should have spent the momentum anyway and tried to de- and make sure that they take that guy out. Yeah, that's my thought behind that. And try to get up to that line in that open space. You got to get it. You see, you got the marsh on the south. You got the blackjack on the north there. Well, I'll say up and down. I don't know which way is north. Yeah, north is yeah, north is up. 
Okay, so north is the blackjack and south is the marsh. You can't go through either. You're stuck in those You're funneled, six, yeah. in those six axes. Um, that's why I do think if I was to go, I'd get the Americans to the other side of that funnel before the British can form up. So another interesting decision you made early in the game was uh, to send uh, the Swamp Fox uh, along the main road with the rest of the uh, American forces. Uh, mm -hmm. What was your thinking on that? Um, I, I didn't want to uh, break my own forces into two. Keep them all together. He has the ability to use the chips by himself, the uh, yeah. tactics chips. He can get through the swamp on the south. That's not a, he's the only one that's not a barrier to. Right. So that would potentially uh, weaken my left flank, uh, the yeah. British left flank uh, along the swamps, if one unit could get through. Yeah. Well, it, it seems that the first few turns, uh, it seemed like everything was going the American way. Uh, you, we ended up uh, at the end of turn four with uh, three momentum chits for the Americans. And it looks like they were pressing. Plus, I had left my militia exposed on my left flank uh, on the bottom, and, and you were able to take them out. So uh, as we started, uh, uh, I think, turn five, uh, things uh, I thought things looked pretty dim. And then there was this lucky cannonball that just uh, took out uh, your one of your leaders and took out a unit, and that really seemed to have turned things around. It got the momentum, go the morale going back up for the British and down for the Americans, and it seemed that you were kind of um, off balance the rest of the game. Yeah, they should have uh, put a Hampton where he, uh, he was right here, okay, at that point. At that point, the artillery was right there. Yeah. Okay. So I go, okay, he's got an avenue of retreat because he can't get her, he can go through the heavy woods. Right. But what I didn't calculate, which is interesting, and I think I said it maybe earlier, is that my chart doesn't show artillery can shoot four. So I'm working off the charts from the original game. So you've got the 2002 <laughs> version. Yeah. And it does show it in the thing. We talked about it earlier. So I knew, yeah. it, I knew it, but it didn't calculate into my head with that. What I should have done, of course, is put him right there. Yeah. But rolling two nines... That's, right, the double uh, nine as well. Yeah, that's that's so <laughs> hard to calculate for. Yeah. Yeah, what are you going to do? It took old Hampton's head off, I do yeah. believe. Uh, too bad for him, you know. Uh, it'd be tough on his his uh, his grandson there. He was the general in the, uh, in the American Civil War. So, tough on him. Tough yeah. on old grandpappy. Well, so there was that. And then I was able to eliminate both of your... your Horse units, your hussars, your your uh, dragoons. Yeah. Well, once one was gone, uh, yeah. once one was gone, the other one was defenseless. He had no chips. His leader was gone, and he was yeah. half the strength he was a moment ago. Well, plus his retreat, <laughs> his retreat route was cut off. Uh, you know, facing the swamps. Yeah. You know, I didn't anticipate the directional retreat. Uh, I forgot about that. Nonsense. And and that's really something to be aware of in this. Uh, really in the entire series, is uh, making sure you have a retreat path. There are two things that could really mess you up. One is that, if possible, you're supposed to retreat in a specified direction. So in this case, the Americans must, if possible, retreat uh, to the left or, or west, if you will, or northwest or southwest, and the British to the right. If possible. Yeah, you know, I reread that uh, earlier today. It's <clears throat> if possible. Um, okay. Well, it was possible anyway. We yeah, I think it, it was. was fine there. It, it wasn't about possibility. It was more about uh, what you want to do as opposed to what you must do. But but then the other <laughs> thing about retreat is uh, if terrain is impassable, you can get wiped out or captured, basically, if you can't retreat. Uh, yeah. So, like, if you're, your back's against the swamp. But the other thing that is really tricky about this uh, game is that you must respect stacking limits at all times, including during retreat. So yeah. if you've got some, some um, you know, a, a significant stack uh, behind a, a unit that's being attacked, you know, either one of us could, could end up in a situation where we have to sacrifice men just to get them out of harm's way. That could be quite devastating in itself. 
especially with the double turn situation. That's that was a double time on uh, on Hamptons units. I believe he got headshotted. Then you got uh, the double initiative, maybe back to back, and just wiped him out. So that's the other thing, and I think these elements really make the game interesting. The fact that uh, initiative can shift like that, that uh, you can acquire momentum chits. And the other thing I really like uh, that makes this game uh, interesting is the tactical matrix. So with those three things, initiative, momentum, and tactical matrix, you've got a lot of uh, unpredictability. Things can swing in different directions, and uh, I think it makes the game fun. It's still a game. It's not really a simulation. It's a game. But I think it's a fun game. And this particular scenario, I think, is fairly straightforward. As you say, the Americans come from the left to the right. Uh, they're kind of funneled between the blackjack oak and the swamp. And the British just have to hold their ground the best they can uh, with, the, as you mentioned, interior lines. Mm -hmm. That's why I think it's almost imperative to get past that, that, that barrier there on the left and the right and get them out into the open. Yeah. Yeah, I see that. Uh, yeah, getting getting rid of the uh, foraging, par foraging party and maintaining initiative for the Americans on turn three would be huge, I think. Yes. Yeah, I think that, well, that's, that's one thing that would do. What I wanted to ask you about was the use of the uh, militia. Yeah. How do you see the use of militia in this game? Ought they be stacked with the regulars? Ought they be by themselves, sometimes stacked with them? What, what do you think, Dave? Well, there there is a, a negative uh, die roll modifier if you're, I, I don't know if you're attacking, but definitely if you're defending yeah. with all militia, you, you take a hit. So it's almost better. I I mean... It's almost imperative. To well, it's them. almost better, if not imperative, to stack them, to mix them with regulars. Mm -hmm. And not only that... Uh, if well, I, not that you can choose to use them as cannon fodder, because I think when you're shooting cannon, you're you're designating the guy or rifles yes. for that matter. Yeah, you pick your you pick your target on that. Yeah. yeah. So rarely are you going to use them as a lead unit. So they're typically not going to be uh, the target, but they do bulk up your stack. So you can have a strong, you know, a strong morale unit, uh, regular, sitting with militia. And I don't know, it's, it could be fairly, you know, formidable. You you're, you minimize the drawback of having militia. So, for example, your North Carolina militia uh, mm -hmm. ended up being uh, alone with the cannon. The cannon fired, were not able to knock out my guy, and then I did close combat against your North Carolina militia. Well, I get the negative modifier plus the negative morale, uh, really boosted my chances of getting a good result, which is actually uh, what happened. I think also that I can, one thing I could do is fire my cannons together, can't you? As one big shot. I think you can, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think I missed something in the, yeah. in the game on that, maybe. At well, we, some haven't, point. we haven't played this in a while, so, you oh, know, yeah. as usual, we're always remembering stuff as we, as we go along. Right, right. Yeah, I totally so, forgot about that. I think that at one point my guys were like four away and I could have, ah, who cares? Yeah. Anyway, so oh, well. Um, the Fog of War or the Fortunes of War, if you will. Yeah, right. So good. So we've played most of the games in this uh, series. Uh, what do you think about the series in general? I like it. I like the look of it. It looks good. It's a good looking game. I, I, <laughs> I like traditional hex and counter type war games. And th these are fairly easy uh, to follow. Uh, we took two sessions to play this particular scenario, but I think um, this one and maybe a couple other ones can be done, you know, in an afternoon pretty easily, I think. And then some of the longer ones, th they don't take weeks to play. Um, even the most complex ones, I think, can be done in a few, you know, a few sessions, a few days. I almost think these smaller scenarios shine more than the larger ones. Like uh, we played Brandywine. Yeah. Did we play Brandywine? Did we play Brandywine? We did play. We did. Yeah. Okay. And uh, that one, I don't even remember what happened there. But uh, uh, I think the smaller one like this is even uh, shines even more than those. Well, it's easy to it's easy to comprehend. It's fairly yeah. the tactics are fairly straightforward, mm -hmm. and I I think it has decent replay value, even though. 
the basic uh, flow of the battle is the same. Um, mm -hmm. But there's, I think there's enough variation with the initiative momentum and the tactical matrix to make it interesting. Yeah, I enjoy these games. They're good. Uh, and in this close. particular in mm. this particular scenario, we haven't actually gotten to a point where the Americans reach the campsites, because there's an additional uh, wrinkle that this game provides is um, to find out whether the Americans start looting the campsite and basically um, disorganize themselves, which mm -hmm. historically is what turned things around for the British and allowed them to to drive back the Americans. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I, I would say the, um, uh, all in all, a good game. Do you have any final thoughts on this? Um, I had them. I said them. Okay, excellent. Well, mm -hmm. I think uh, we should start planning our next campaign. What do you think? Good idea. That's all for now. Thanks for watching. Feel free to leave a comment below. If you enjoyed this video, consider giving it a like and subscribing. Until next time, this has been The Great Game.